In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a pleasure, it is a joy to be here in the beginning of this uh, new year, this new liturgical year, year A, to be more specific, where we, the Church, uh, start a new cycle. We focus on new readings, we focus again on the mysteries of uh, Christ Jesus. And we begin to prepare ourselves for, to celebrate both uh, his coming in flesh. So God comes in flesh, he comes in a human being, and so we have roughly uh, a month to prepare ourselves for that. But also to look forward and to look for his second coming, when he will come again in glory. So welcome again to our service. Uh, hopefully it will be the last one before we resume our public public service. Nevertheless, we'll carry on uh, live streaming from this platform. And it's always a pleasure also to start with Bach, with one of his cantatas. So, uh, yeah, much for, uh, as a suggestion of uh, Mother Sue, we'll hear more of, of this uh, great composer uh, during the service. So, my brothers and sisters, we enter today, or we celebrate at this time, the solemn season of Advent in which the Church bid us prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ, a coming that we recall in the child of Bethlehem, a coming that we experience in the gift of his spirit, in the bread of the Eucharist, in the joy of human lives that are shared, a coming we wait for when God gathers up all things in Christ. Let us in this holy season reflect on the coming of Christ, who brings light that shines on our path, that brings light to the world. Let us leave behind the darkness of sin, walk in the light that shines on our path, and renew within ourselves the hope of glory to which he beckons us. The grace of, of, of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So now it is time for us to awake out of sleep. For deliverance is nearer to us now than it was when we first believed. It is far on in the night. Day is near. Let us therefore cast off the deeds of darkness and put on the armor as soldiers of the light. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts and renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to the God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as a sign of the gradual hope and increasing light of Christ in our lives, as a way of preparing ourselves uh, for Christmas, we are going to lit now our first uh, candle of the Advent wreath. <clears throat> Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors. To you be praise and glory forever. You call the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfillment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamb to our feet and a light upon our path, for you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, 
Turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us now attend to God's scripture. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. My sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace God has given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He also will strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. So the response to the psalm, Turn us again, O God, show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved turn us again O God show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved hear O shepherd of Israel you that led Joseph like a flock shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your mighty strength and come to our salvation. Turn us again, O God, show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, How long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You feed them with the bread of tears. You give them abundance of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbours, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, O God, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. 
Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the home will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may, may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we came in, as Father Marco just said, uh, to Bach's canticle for this day, for Advent Sunday. Wach et auf, wake, O oh wake. It's a great hymn written by Martin Luther. Wake, O oh wake, for night is flying. And in fact, it, it is a direct quotation from today's Gospel. And I'm reminded of it by a, a, a different quotation from the, the now uh, late philosopher Susan Sontag, who once said, be serious, be passionate, wake up. Be serious, be passionate, wake up. Um, Sontag was, of course, not a Christian, but it's a very, very good description of our Christian calling, and it's a very, very good description of the Christian calling that comes to us today out of the scriptures. It is about noticing, about being attentive, about hearing the signs of the times. Our scriptures are full of apocalyptic imagery. Signs in the heavens, stars falling, the earthquake, the powers will be shaken. And if you notice this imagery in Mark's Gospel, this imagery in Mark's Gospel is actually repeated and it is repeated, of course, at the crucifixion. For the apocalyptic events which are foretold in this gospel and which we look forward to today have already happened in the crucifixion. For when the Son of Man is lifted up, that moment of apparent total defeat is actually the moment when judgment is brought upon the world and when the powers that demean and dehumanize, the powers that force people into poverty and disease, the powers that actually misuse religion and economics and politics are comprehensively overthrown. Not with the power of strength, but with power made perfect in weakness, with power that comes out of apparent defeat and becomes totally visible, of course, in the resurrection when the power of love is evident. So we also are called to be passionate and serious and to be awake and to notice the signs of our times. And we can be forgiven for thinking that apocalyptic imagery is all around us as well. We are living in the midst of the triple crises, COVID, credit 
and climate, the crisis of a global pandemic, the crisis of a world economy that is built on debt and squeezes the most out of those who have least, and potential climate catastrophe if we are unable to find more sustainable ways of living. For although in Christ the powers have been comprehensively overcome, that fullness of God's reign, when justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth, is not yet fully visible. And that is why we are called to live in the now, the time between the now of Christ's advent and Christ's victory, and the not yet, the time when that victory will become entirely visible. And the time of the now, the in-between time, is the time of the church. The time of the church in which we are called to notice the signs of our own times and to bring those into conversation with the values of the kingdom. The kingdom of justice and love, the kingdom of relentless mercy and truth. And of course, in the pandemic, many Christians have done this, sometimes in very significant and large and public ways, the food banks, the school meals, and so on, but also sometimes in very small and unseen ways, quietly making phone calls to a neighbour, quietly doing some shopping for someone who is needed. The acts of mercy done in small ways are deeply significant. But we are also called to be awake to the signs of the times, to actually see in our current crises, the crises of COVID, credit and climate, not God's judgment brought upon the world, but the result of choices and structures which privilege the economic over the relation, which privilege power over generosity and love. And we are called to ask questions about those and to imagine the kind of political and economic and religious settlement that might overcome those anew. For if these apocalyptic signs in today's gospel are recapitulated in the crucifixion, the judgment that is brought upon the world comes also in the form of the vulnerable baby in the manger. For the mark of the good society is how it treats its most vulnerable. Children, the elderly, the stranger, I could go on. So on this Advent Sunday, we are called anew into hope. We are called anew to proclaim God's kingdom of justice and mercy and love that was wrought on the, in the manger and on the cross. And we are called to be the church, the living body of Christ, in which that vocation of the world to be full of justice and mercy and love is fully visible. And for each of us, that vocation means be serious, be passionate, wake up. Amen. Let us now declare our faith in God. We believe in God, the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God, the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. 
we believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The response to the prayers is when I say, Maranatha, you respond, come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the church, the sacrament of the kingdom. We pray for our archbishops, Justin and Stephen, for Peter, our bishop, for the life of the diocese. Today, for Shrubend, All Saints with St. Set Said, Wivenhoe, St. Mary, Erwin Lamons, Mayor Sarah Batsmeal, Elizabeth Ring, Glyn Stanwell. And we give thanks for all retired clergy readers and lay ministers, particularly those who live and work in the Deanery of Colchester. In the wider Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Zakondi in West Africa, from Eastern Michigan in the Episcopal Church of the USA. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for our world. In the life of this nation, we Pray as we emerge from the second lockdown, praying particularly for those regions who will still face higher restrictions. And we pray that in all places there will be a responsible and proportionate response to the relaxation of rules over Christmas. With Christian Aid this week, we pray for the people of the occupied Palestinian territory so they are not alone in their struggle. On this, the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the life of this parish, particularly this week, for those who live in Brooks Avenue, Burnells Avenue and Cabo Way. We ask for all our neighbours in this place the joy and hope of the gospel. Maranatha. Amen. We give thanks for those who celebrate their birthdays this week, and among them from this parish, Lorene Griffith and Inga Vossilieni. Bless them particularly on these days of their birth as we rejoice together in the gift of life. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who have particularly asked our prayers, and among them Robert Akawua, Shirley Desbois, and Cassie Martin. In a moment of silence, we remember any known to us personally. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. And we remember before you those who have died, among them Grace de Souza and Daisy Westbrook. May we with them come to a share in your eternal kingdom. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We keep silence to offer our own intentions and thanksgiving to God. As we await in joyful expectation for the coming of our Saviour, we offer these prayers through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Almighty Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathering to your kingdom. Glory, Glory to you, you O God, God, forever. Wisdom has built her house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbles himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in, in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever, praising you and saying.
are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Bartholomew, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Edmund, St. Martin of Tours, St. George, uh, and St. Paul, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we wait in joyful expectation for the coming of his kingdom, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Jesus Christ Christ is is Lord. To the the glory glory of God God the Father. So hopefully this will be the last Sunday where we are still facing restrictions where we can't have people coming to our churches. So therefore, I invite you as I commune, you also commune as I take communion, you also take spiritually communion, and next week, or actually from this Thursday, hopefully we will be able again to 
uh, resume our services and we'll be able to have uh, a live congregation. So as I commune, you also commune spiritually. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we wait the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So some notice. So as you heard Father Marco say, um, we are able to resume public worship. We're actually going to do that next Sunday so that it's consistent across the parish. So there won't be any live services during the week this week, um, but we will resume uh, live worship in the churches from next Sunday and in this church at St Bart's 
uh, that means at 10 a.m. But we will, of course, um, also carry on uh, live streaming as we were before. Uh, because of that, uh, probably sometime this week, but certainly very soon, uh, we will be publishing details of Christmas services um, across the parish. And um, we are having an Advent course, uh, which is going to be on Zoom. That starts not tomorrow, uh, but next Monday. Uh, so that is Monday, the 7th of December. And it's called Matriarchs, Patriarchs, Prophets, the promise and the hope of Jesus. So this actually looks at the themes of the Sundays in, in, in Advent, uh, looking forward uh, to, to Jesus, uh, the, the Saviour and the Judge. And um, partly this will be through scriptural texts, partly it will be through liturgical texts, and, and other material. So the link uh, will appear in various places shortly. So if you want any details of that, keep your eye on the website, on social media, and on the newsletter. I think that's probably all. Just to add uh, to the fact that um, uh, the link will be published more specifically under uh, the resources tab. So look for resources on our website and you'll find there the link when it's published. With love and justice, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. In power and glory, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So let us receive now the final blessing. <clears throat> May God the Father, judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son coming among us in power reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So, our Lord, so let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.